By September 29th, 1944, D-Day plus 14, almost all of the island of Peleliu was in American hands. Colonel Kunio Nakagawa's remaining Japanese forces were trapped in the coral ridges of the Omoburgo Mountains, in an area 1,200 yards long and 400 yards wide. Nakagawa had made a strong defensive effort to knock out the American beachhead before it consolidated, but his armored counterattack was stopped by heavy anti-tank fire. The Marines then took the airfield. Instructed in a new tactical doctrine, the Japanese withdrew to carefully prepared defensive lines, with previously ranged and sighted machine guns, mortars, and artillery. There would be no hopeless suicidal attacks, or wasteful use of men and materiel. They dug in hard. The Marines' expectations of a fast and hard engagement like Tarawa were quickly extinguished. The Japanese were aided by the island's unique topographical features. Before the war, they had mined the island for phosphates, and in preparation for a probable assault, used the same mining techniques to enlarge the coral caverns that honeycombed the coral ridgeline of the Amonbrogo Mountains. They dug vast networks of new tunnels and caves, more than 500 in all. Some complexes were large enough to hold over a thousand men while others were outfitted with steel doors that slid open to allow artillery pieces to fire then quickly disappear back into the mountains. Their extensive network of fortified caves, concrete bunkers, and pillboxes stretched deep into the interior of the island. They created deadly concealed cross-firing positions that inflicted severe losses against the Marines. It quickly earned the nickname Bloody Nose Ridge. Eugene Sledge, a mortarman of K Company, 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines, poignantly described the fighting in the Omonbrogo pocket in his famous combat memoir, With the Old Breed. We were resigned to the dismal conclusion that our battalion wasn't going to leave the island until all the Japanese were killed, or we had all been hit. We merely existed from hour to hour, from day to day. Numbed by fear and fatigue, our minds only thought of personal survival. The only glimmer of hope was a million dollar wound, or for the battle to end soon. But it dragged on and on, and casualties mounted. A sense of despair pervaded us. It seemed that the only escape was to be killed or wounded. The will for self-preservation weakened. Many men I knew became intensely fatalistic. The Marines quickly adopted a tactic of utilizing all available firepower to reduce Japanese strongpoints one by one before sending infantry into assault. They used bulldozers to clear the way for tanks, flamethrowers, and howitzers, often firing at cave entrances and fortifications at point-blank range. F-4U Corsairs of Marine Fighter Squadron 114 flew non-stop air support missions, dropping bombs and napalm canisters on Japanese positions hidden in the coral ridges. It was known as the shortest bombing run in history. It was only 1,100 yards from the airfield to the target. Some pilots didn't even bother raising their landing gear because the run was so short. As they slowly cleared out strong points and advanced, the surrounded Japanese troops would hide until nightfall and launch guerrilla attacks from behind their lines, often infiltrating marine foxholes with bayonets and sabers. Violent hand-to-hand -hand combat ensued. The Marines fought to reduce the Amonbrogo pocket for a month, sustaining over 6,500 casualties before they were finally relieved by two regiments of the Army's 81st Infantry Division on October 15th. The Japanese continued to hold out for almost another month against the U.S. Army, inflicting over 3,000 casualties. Out of resources, Colonel Nakagawa burned his regimental colors and performed ritual suicide on November 24th 1944. He was posthumously promoted to general for his valor displayed in the defense of Peleliu. The island was finally declared clear on November 27, 1944, but 33 Japanese soldiers remained in their caves until finally surrendering in April of 1947. The operation on Peleliu took nine weeks longer than was expected. And for what the U.S. Pacific Command considered to be a tactically irrelevant island airfield, because of the previous success in the Philippine Sea. The ferocious battle on Peleliu is therefore often described as a pointless sacrifice, especially to men like Eugene Sludge, whose life was never the same after what he experienced. <laughs>